Norwich has a very long history of publishing newspapers. Indeed, the city claims to have published the very first provincial newspaper, with Francis Burgess publishing the Norwich Post in 1701. But where did he publish it? It's believed to have been here, next door to a building now named Francis House, which, as we shall see later, has its own newspaper history. But there is a bit of a mystery, as a blue plaque in Castle Street claims that it was published there. I think this plaque may be wrong, as we shall see later. Anyway, Francis Burgess published the Norwich Post somewhere, from 1701 until his death in 1706, when his widow Elizabeth continued, enabling the Norwich Post to be published until 1713. She commissioned a monument to her husband in the porch of St Andrew's Church, Francis Burgess claimed to have introduced the trade of printing into Norwich, but there was in fact an earlier Dutch printer operating in the city from Dove Street. He published it at the White Dove, later the Edinburgh Arms, seen here destroyed in 1898. The Norwich Post soon had other rivals, the Norwich Postman from 1706 to 1709 and the Norwich Gazette from 1707 to 1746, which would go on to merge with the Norfolk Chronicle, which itself would continue to be published until 1955. The Norwich Post was published weekly until 1713, when it was superseded by the Norwich Courant, why do I think that the Norwich Post was not published in Castle Street, where the blue plaque is located? That's because that was the home of the Norwich Mercury, which was published from 1714 until 1998, making it the longest-lived Norwich newspaper. It was originally published on Wednesdays and Saturdays, costing a penny halfpenny and tuppence respectively. The price would vary throughout the years and it would end up as a free paper. However, at its peak it had a series of papers across the county and into Suffolk. At some point it moved into St George's Street and was destroyed in the floods of 1912. It was subsequently at 45 London Street on the site of what is now Cozy Club. From 1885 to 1905 the Norfolk Daily Standard was published. I'll read a report of an article they published, which is quite amusing. A gentleman went into the office of an insurance agent in London and asked the clerk the rates for insurance against appendicitis. The youth had never heard the word before, but consulted a book and then replied, Two shillings, sir, the rate is the same as for other classes of furniture. This building on St Giles Street was built for the Norfolk Daily Standard, but only occupied by them for a short period. It includes portraits of William Caxton, the printer, and Daniel Defoe, the writer. And so to the Eastern Daily Press and Eastern Evening News. The EDP was founded in 1870, growing out of the Norfolk News, which had dated from 1845. The Norfolk News itself had begun as a protest against the Norwich Mercury, which had refused to report protest of those opposing attacks levied by the church. The EDP began as the Eastern Counties Daily Press, changing its name two years later. It was located at number 57 London Street from 1900, built for the purpose by Edward Boardman. I've never been able to explain the variation in dates on the building. It relocated to Francis House in 1959, again into a purpose-built location, and then to Prospect House in 1969, where it still occupies a small part of the building. Its 2023 circulation is 16,413, down from over 47,000 ten years earlier. The Eastern Evening News dates from 1882 and shared the same locations as the EDP. It has a circulation of 3,736 in 2023. Both these local papers are encouraging readers to subscribe online. The precise reason for this sculpture outside Prospect House has never been established, 
but has been surmised that it signifies the slow squeezing out of medieval Golden Ball Street by modern architecture. The Eastern Daily Press and Eastern Evening News were printed by Archant at Thorpe St Andrew, but this print centre closed in 2019. Our local newspapers traditionally put the emphasis on local news, to the extent that it is said that when the Titanic sank, the headline in the Eastern Daily Press read, Norfolk Man Drowns. <laughs>